looking at the time frame that was covered by the previous forecast. We see stronger seismic events, a clustering, a typical clustering on the 22nd and 23rd, pretty much where we anticipated it to occur. I also left the option open for the 25th, 26th, that will be the next lunar peak relative to the critical planetary geometry. These are the red and purple peaks here, but we had them on the 22nd and 23rd, a 7-point threat to Solomon Islands, a 6.2 offshore Baja California, and a 6.1 that was in Western Turkey. And if you have been following the updates in the social media, you will have noticed the atmospheric fluctuation that we pointed to on the 17th. That was about five days prior to the seismic event in Western Turkey. As you can see, the purple band goes right over the area where the strong earthquake occurred. But I would like to emphasize the grouping or clustering of larger earthquakes in time, a phenomenon that is unexplained in seismology. But as you can see, critical planetary and lunar geometry perfectly explain why that happens. Since the 6.1 Western Turkey, we have not seen another six pointer. We did have two moderate to strong seismic events on the 25th and on the 27th, magnitude 5.7 at the Solomon Islands and a 5.8 at the Azores Islands region. And we see that they follow the critical planetary geometry, some critical planetary geometry uh, converging with a lunar peak. And we see the same on the 27th. What can we expect in the coming week? Later today, a planetary conjunction occurs with Mercury, Earth and Mars. And I always like to do comparisons what that kind of conjunctions did in the past. Do we have examples of major seismic events, which tells us how critical the conjunctions can be. And indeed, we do have a similar example from 30 December 1881. We have a Mercury, Earth, Mars conjunction and Venus is nearby. And if we translate the planetary and lunar situation at the time to an SSGI graph, we see the critical planetary geometry, that's the red peak here, followed by a high lunar peak. And early on the 31st, a magnitude 7.9 occurred at the Nicobar Islands. We also see critical planetary geometry with Venus on the 2nd of January, 1882. And if we compare this to the current situation, we have the critical planetary geometry of Mercury, that's the conjunction with Mercury, Earth and Mars later today. Then we have critical planetary geometry involving Venus, immediately followed by a high lunar peak. So let's compare these planetary configurations, in particular the conjunction with Venus. At the time, in 1881, when Mercury, Earth and Mars were in a conjunction, Venus was closely in a conjunction with Mercury, Saturn and Neptune. That is a very, very critical configuration. And the current situation with Venus looks less critical. We have Mercury, Earth and Mars in a conjunction and Venus nearby, but Venus is nowhere near a critical conjunction as in 1881. However, as we have seen on the SGI graph for the current situation, Venus will be in a critical conjunction within two days and that will be with Earth and Mars as well. And that conjunction is not as critical as it was in 1881 with Mercury, Saturn and Neptune. But still, I do believe that we should anticipate a strong to major seismic event following the critical planetary geometry later today and early on December 1st, which will be followed by a high lunar peak on December 1st, December 2nd. So there is the potential for a strong to major seismic event, most likely on the 1st, 2nd, maybe the 3rd of December if it arrives late, but a seismic increase should be anticipated around the lunar peak on December 1st, December 2nd, and it could go as high as magnitude 7.9 or thereabouts. But that is a worst case scenario and it very much depends on the condition of Earth's crust whether or not this is going to happen. That's the amount of stress between tectonic plates. That's the blind spot, we don't know that. So we have to go by the planetary and lunar geometry to anticipate potential larger seismic activity. That also brings us to the potential regions. This morning I was able to isolate these two regions marked by the purple bands as potentially critical. It certainly does not exclude other regions there was also some indication of upcoming larger seismic activity for the Caribbean region, South America, maybe Central America, and to a lesser degree, the North American West Coast. But the strongest fluctuations in the last couple of days indicated the areas marked by these purple bands. Again, these are estimates and it could be off. So in general, if you are in an earthquake prone area, be on watch, especially on the 1st, 2nd of December, maybe already the 30th, that will be tomorrow, following the critical planetary geometry. We don't know how the Earth is going to respond, how quickly it is going to respond to this planetary and lunar geometry. Later on in the week, 
we see some critical planetary geometry involving Mercury, followed by a higher lunar peak. And I do believe that from 5, 6 December, that will be roughly the second week of December, is going to be more critical. We're probably going to see a clustering of stronger seismic events. This could approach magnitude 6. It could also go well into the 6th magnitude range. But I do believe that the second week of December, there will be more seismic unrest due to a convergence of critical planetary geometry. These are the red and purple peaks. But I will cover that in the next forecast. Always check out the website for the latest forecast, the magnitude probability, and you'll also find links to our social media channels. Be safe everyone, until next time.